Okay, welcome to part 7, I think. Um, in this video I'm going to be going over the um, actual validation. Um, so what we're going to be doing is using this function to fetch the user IDs and then we're going to be comparing the sort of number of users against the number of users that someone actually typed in that box. And if that number is different, we are going to say that they've, they've entered an invalid user because somehow we haven't returned one that they entered or we haven't returned the ID for one that they entered uh, and then we're going to try and work out which one isn't in this list anymore so hopefully that makes sense and um, I think it will once we actually get to the code so now let's just go back to our new conversation page and we will um, create the code here to deal with this so the first thing we obviously need, obviously need to do is get the list of user IDs so we can define a new variable here called user IDs which is just going to be equal to the function we just created so fetch user IDs and we're going to pass in the user names array okay so now we've got the user IDs from the user names we can check to see if they the numbers in each one are equal so we can do if count uh, user IDs it's not equal to count user names and if that is true if they're not equal that means there's been an error so we're going to append something to the errors array and the something I'm going to append is a string which is going to be the following uh, users could not be found and then we're going to have one of those and then a comma, separate, comma separated list of usernames and the way we're going to work out this list is using the array diff function so what the array diff function does is it takes a let's do an example up here so if we did array oops uh, diff like so this function takes well an unlimited number of parameters the first one has to be um, an array and the second one makes the most sense as an array but it can be anything um, so if you pass in for example the array uh, one two and oh dear three like so and then as the second parameter you pass in the array 1 and 2 this will then return an array with um, 3 as the um, only value so what is actually happening is PHP is checking each of these um, elements of this first array to see if those elements are in any of the following parameters if that makes any sense I hope it does the php.net page explains it quite well so it might be worth going there um, so the result of this effectively is that this function returns the values in this array that are not in this array so we can use that here by checking to see if the um, well we can, what we can do is use this function to directly get the user the, val the user names which are not in the user IDs array um, or, or obviously the user IDs array um, has the names as the keys not as the values so we can use the array keys function to get an array of the keys so um, yeah I'm not, hopefully I'm explaining that quite okay um, like I said go and check out the php.net page and maybe play around with these functions to see what they do um, but essentially this is how we're going to use them so to get the um, append this on for now as a random string but I'm going to, have to do something else in a moment so to append well to work out which names we don't have <laughs> if that makes sense we can use the array diff function like this um, so the first parameter is going to be the list of names that users specified so uh, user names the second parameter is going to be the user IDs that we returned but we need the keys of this array so we're going to use the array keys on this like so. So now what this whole thing here will return is the list of names which the user specified but don't have an ID associated with them. Um, and then we can just implode that whole thing with a comma and a space which will then generate a list of names which were not found in the database. So that's it for the validation actually. So all we need to do now is create a function to actually create the conversation. So what we're going to do is just come down here, as we always do, and we're going to do a simple if empty errors, 
and then oops in here we're going to code the code to actually send the message um, and also what we need to do is show the error messages if they um, if any exist and if none exist we want to show the success message so in the past I've done, done this in a slightly confusing way um, that was sort of more neat and efficient in terms of lines of code however this time I'm going to do it the sort of chess quick the most sort of simple way um, so that hopefully you'll follow the logic and understand what's going on so all we need to do is check to see if the form has been submitted now instead of doing this whole checking all these again what we can do is check to see if the errors array is defined so we can just do if is set um, oh where am I typing that <laughs> hmm. if is set errors and if it is that means the form has been submitted because errors is only defined inside this block where the form has to be submitted so hopefully that makes sense so inside of here what we can do is check to see if errors is empty so if empty errors what this means here is that um, the form has been submitted but no errors occurred else the form has been submitted but errors did occur so in the else condition we're going to loop over all of the errors so for each errors as error we're going to output the error message box with the error inside of it so we're just going to do oops, echo div class message error and then the error message so we're going to comma a new string on the end which is going to be just the error straight up error and then the div like so and one of those to make it work okay so just here we're going to do the same thing except we're going to send the success message so we're going to do echo div class message success possibly spelled wrong your message has been sent hooray and then we're going to just add a quick link to return to the inbox so this is just an a tag so a href equals index.php page equals inbox because once you've sent the message you're not really going to want to read it um, so I'm just going to put a link to say you know like go back um, when you're making this in a real system you could probably do something a little bit more user friendly but never mind so the text of the link is going to be return to your inbox like so ok so we need to end the a tag and the div tag uh, which looks pretty much right to me so now what we can do is test out all of this validation and just make sure that it all works because we haven't actually tested this code for quite a while and we've done quite a lot so let's just go to our browser and reload it for syntax errors good start so if I just click submit ok we should see we get you must enter at least one name because the um, um, mm, that's a bit odd if we just go back to the code oh yeah ok so the name is empty I was thinking that was this error but it's not ok so going back to the browser that's good so we've got that all of them are empty so the if empty check has failed for all values if I put in a um, testing subject and a testing body and click submit we'll only get the first error however you'll notice that the um, values disappear from these forms which is really annoying so imagine you typed out a huge message and just mistyped someone's username you don't want to have to do the whole thing again that would be a pain so the way we can get around this is by having PHP re-output the data you send to it back in these form fields so going back to the code this is a really straightforward thing to do um, we just need to add a value attribute to these two text elements so we can just add value equals and then inside of here we're going to add an inline PHP block which is going to be if is set post to which is just the oops the post variable that would correspond to this form element being submit submitted and if it is set we're going to do echo HTML entities of post without that thing there two like so okay the HTML entities by the way um, is just to protect against people accidentally XSS attacking themselves um, which would be quite hard to do but if someone does something by accident and it sort of breaks the page um, they're going to think it's your fault so best to avoid that 
So I'm going to copy that down into the subject and just change to to subject. So copy, paste, copy, paste. Lovely. And then the same for the text area, except you don't have a value attribute. You actually place the text in between the tag. So uh, here. Nope. Yeah, like that. So I'm going to paste that in there. Nope. I'm going to paste this in there. So copy and paste. And then obviously this just needs to be changed to body. Oops. Like so. Okay, so we can reload our page once more and resend this data and that should all appear. So there you go. The message is now preserved if for some reason there is an error. Okay, so the final thing we need to test out is our regular expression. So let's enter a name, so, uh, well, test. Um, the following users cannot be found. Test, so that's not actually the regular expression, but that's good. That's because there is not a user with the name test. Um, but we can actually test our expression by just adding like a f an 8. Um, so there you go, we get this error, which is the list of names you gave doesn't look valid, and that's because an 8 and a 9 are not in this list of available characters. Um, something that is probably worth uh, sort of also including in this expression um, is a comma at the end of the list. Because what would happen if you had that? is that you'd get an empty element inside this um, usernames array. Um, obviously MySQL wouldn't find that user, but it would be displayed as the following users could not be found empty user, which would not look great, but that's something I can leave for you to do. Okay, so that's pretty much that for validation. Um, so let's just do one more check, which is to enter a name that does exist and see if it doesn't give any errors at all. So let's enter my name, because I'm the only one in the table at the moment, and click send. And you can see we have your message has been sent and a link to return to your inbox, um, which looks like it's going to work, and it does. Um, obviously, the message hasn't actually been sent because all we've done is validate the form. We haven't actually, um, you know, sort of made it work, I guess. Um, and that's what we're going to do in the next part because I'm going to end this one here because we seem to have come to a sort of natural stopping point. So thank you for watching and come back for, I believe, will be part eight.